Well, don't tell that to Michael Jackson family because Michael Jackson, son, oldest son Omar, mother is named Helga from Norway, and she came to Orlando and Michael Jackson told me that Helga was sick. I didn't know what Helga had. She was covered from head to foot. I told the nurse to give the woman the compounds as was prescribed, and she did. Now, four days later, you know, the very next day, I'm going to do something stupid. I go up to see my patient, but I don't see my patient. There's a woman sitting on the bed. So I asked her, I said, pardon me, man, uh, where is the other woman from Norway? She said, there are no other woman. I am the woman from Norway. Well, the compound did such. She's sitting on the bed. I didn't expect that. She looked different. Three days later, Michael Jackson come running down to tell me, Helga is walking. I say, Helga is walking? He said, yes. I say, well, that's normal. No, said he. She'd been in a wheelchair for five years in Norway. She came in a wheelchair paralyzed for five years. And guess what Helga told me? She came out and she hugged me with tears in her eyes. And she said, I have been in menopause for five years as long as I have been in a wheelchair. And my period came down today. After five years of menopause. Then, Michael Jackson's son, which is Omar, I used to call him Mikey, he had a tumor in his head. I had gone to Africa, to Namibia, and I came back with a group of herbs. One of them was named Sia, it's white like milk, but it's fluffy. I said, I put some in a bag and I told Mikey to inhale. He inhaled and he sneezed 52 times. And by the time he got to the door, he passed the tumor out of his nose. <laughs> Michael Jackson, babysitter, compromised the man that I had so much faith in and so much everything is good, and maybe you do. But this man is a man that I'm going to mention that has offended the black race and many other races too, but especially ours. I went to see Mr. Teddy Pendergrass because he was paralyzed from his neck down. I was not looking at his paralysis, I was looking at his stomach. He had a great big stomach. And he asked me, Glenda Garcia asked me, why are you looking at his stomach? We are talking about his arms and his legs and his moving his neck. He was a C4, he couldn't do anything. At the ending of two months, Teddy, and something the Russian doctor said he would never do again in his life. I told Mr. Teddy Pendergrass, you paid the doctors $275,000 and they have you paralyzed. I'm telling you what I'm going to do. I'm going to charge you half that price, but when I get to your waistline, that everything is moving except your leg, you're going to give me half my money. He said, okay. When I'm in St. Thomas, I didn't want anyone to be looking for me. I didn't want anyone to see me. I was kind of tired. I was working very hard then, running from Chicago to New York to Honduras and back to Puerto Rico. Oh God, it was heavy on me. And then I had three wives. That was even worse. <laughs> I was in Thomas and, you know, enjoying myself. And I got this phone. So now I'm just going to be calling me. 
Now I'm not too satisfied with that phone call because I don't want anyone talking to me. I want to spend a week without anyone speaking to me. I don't want to talk. I pick up the phone. It's Teddy Pendergrass. Yes? Well, you better come to Philadelphia because the bottom of my feet is hurting me and I want to know why. I say, why? The bottom of your feet is hurting you. I went to Philadelphia. But when I got to Philadelphia, now remember, I just jumped from Michael Jackson babysitter onto Teddy Pendergrass, and you will see the connection. I got to Philadelphia that night, to his house that night, I mean. But there's some dark spots in his house, and there is a man sitting in the dark. This man that's sitting in the dark asks me, why did I remove eggs, butter, cheese, meat, starch from Teddy's diet? I said, what did you ask? Why did I remove eggs and meat and blood from his diet? Starches? I said, sir, do you have any knowledge or understanding of cell food consistency? I said, well, if you don't have that understanding of science, well, I'm going to help you with it. I still haven't seen his face. He's in the dark. So, I said, you only have to go to a zoo and look at a zookeeper. He does not feed the gorilla the same food he feeds the polar bear. He does not feed the eagle the same food he feeds the sparrow. The eagle eats meat and blood, not the hummingbird or the sparrow. They eat nectar and seeds. So genes and food has a consistency. Are you telling me, sir, and I can't see the man, that Mr. Teddy Pendergrass, being of an African gene, that he is allowed to eat eggs and milk, cheese, butter, and milk? Is that what you're telling me, sir? But I could never see the man's face. And you guys are going to be surprised who the man in the dark was. Oh my God. When I got outside, Philip and Paul, that you guys may know who have to put this affair, who have to make it what it is, Philip and Paul, mother named Annette Thomas, she said to me, you know who the man at the dog was? I said, who? Mr. Deepak Chopra. Wow. Oh. <laughs> now you're going to see the connection with Michael Jackson, babysitter, and the man in the dark. When Grace Rwanda saw that Mikey was cured, tumors of his nose, Helena was walking, Michael, well, if you all remember, Michael jumped up on the SUV, and who you think was with him then? Where did he get that energy? She said, I have lupus for nine years, and I have pain for nine years. On the fourth day, the pain was gone, and the second month, the lupus was gone. And who was treating this woman for nine years? The man in the dark. And I'm writing a book about the man in the dark. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, 